Hi everyone, welcome back to Geography with Mrs Nguane. I've been wanting to post more often on this channel to help all of you, so I thought that I would start with map work, so that way it stretches across all the different grades. But if you do have a specific topic that you'd like me to cover, um, please leave it in the comments below, and I'll try to make that a priority before going into other work. We're going to start off with map work, um, and we're going to be looking at what is a map, uh, the different types of maps, scale, map key, and that type of thing. So let's jump right in. Okay, so what is a map? A map is a drawing of a particular area, such as a city, a country, or continent, and it shows its main features. We can even get smaller maps, like a map of a mall, or even a map of your school, or something like that. A map shows places and objects, often using symbols, which we'll get into. And it also shows position of places and objects. We will definitely go into latitude and longitude in a future video. Um, that's something that is a little bit complicated for some people, so I will definitely do a video on that. They are also smaller than the world that they represent, which is really important. Remember, a map is just a drawing of a place. It's representing an area. And an area always has to be shrunk or reduced to fit onto the piece of paper or maybe a tablet or something that we use nowadays. Okay, if we look at this map of South Africa, we can see that there are different borders for the provinces. Remember, those borders are not physical fences or something like that. They are just a representation for where the end of one province is and the start of another. The map has specific symbols on it, like you can see the capitals are the red stars, um, little dots are the capital city, or sorry, the cities. We also get national parks or reserves. So this is just one specific map that has this amount of detail, but we get maps that go into more detail. We have maps that has less detail. Um, so all maps are different. It just depends on what information we are looking for. Okay, we get different types of maps and they all have different uses. There are, for example, maps like a world map and that shows us continents, countries, and their borders, as well as different oceans around the world. We get physical maps that show us physical features, um, and they always use color to represent these. You can see that on the east side of Africa, um, you see a little bit more greenery than on the west side, especially in the southern hemisphere, and that's because we have the Indian Ocean on the right-hand side on the east. Okay, we also get climatic maps. And that shows us information about climates in different areas and again using color. Political maps show borders of provinces and countries as well as city names. And then the next map is very important, especially from next year in grade nine, you're going to learn how to use a topographic map. Okay, so a topographic map shows the shape and height of the land and other features using symbols and color. In grade nine, you will learn what all of these symbols represent but a topographic map is completely drawn there's no you know pictures in it or anything like that everything is drawn and everything is represented by symbols or color okay so a map key is important like for example if I showed you this topographic map and you had no idea what the little green dots were or the black lines or the red line you would need something to help you identify what you're actually looking at, right? So a map key helps us to do that. It shows what is on a map in diagrammatic form. Here's another example from the previous South Africa map. Here are some of the examples from the topographic map. For example, the buildings, the little black um, squares or rectangles, those are the symbol, but the symbol represents something in real life. Remember, the map is drawn to represent what's happening in real life. Okay, then we're going to touch on using an atlas. This is just very simple, quick. An atlas is a book that contains maps, charts, and facts about the world. And because it has so much information in it, it has so many different maps, it has lots of different charts and graphs and that type of thing. Sometimes it can be difficult to find a specific place or specific map that you're trying to find information on. So that is why we use an index in an atlas, and that is really important. So here's just an example of what it would look like in an index. So at the back of the, the atlas, you'll find 
all the places listed in alphabetical order and they do that so that you can find the places easier and there'll be the name of the place there'll be the province the country that it's in the page number the grid code and then it also tells you the latitude and longitude or coordinates as i said i will make a video on that in the future okay the next thing we're going to cover is scale which is really really important and it's something that you definitely have to understand. Okay, so the scale of a map refers to how much an area has shrunk or has been shrunk or reduced to fit onto a piece of paper. And when we're talking about scale, we either get smaller scale maps or larger scale maps. We're gonna start with smaller scale. So here's an example of a world map. And if you think about the world, that's a very big place that we have to um, fit onto a piece of paper. So it has to be reduced many, many, many times to fit. And that is an, a, is an example of a small scale map. There's very little detail. It's hard to see any rivers or specific places on the map. Everything looks much smaller and that type of thing. So that's how we know that it's a small scale map. But something that I want to point out is even though we say small and large scale, I prefer to use the word smaller and larger because it, there's not one specific point of reference that says, okay, this makes it a small scale map and this makes it a large scale map. We only use the word small and large when we're comparing two different maps. So for example, this map has a smaller scale compared to a map of Johannesburg, for example, that we'll look at later. Okay, so a world map, the world has been reduced many times to fit onto the piece of paper. But then if we look at a continent, for example, that has also been reduced many times, but not as many times as the world map because it's a smaller area. Then, for example, a map of Gauteng, that's been reduced fewer times than the continent map. And then we get a map of Johannesburg, which has been reduced the least amount of times when we're comparing these four maps. So this would be considered a larger scale map compared to the world map. And here you can see there's a lot more detail. Everything looks bigger. You can see that there's an airport, that there's parks or um, recreational areas. You can see the roads and that type of thing. Whereas if we look back at the world map, you can't see any of those things. You can see the bigger things like maybe, I don't know, you'd be able to see the Amazon or something like that. But compared to Johannesburg, there's a lot more detail in this map. So this one would be considered a larger scale map than the world map. So the world map would be considered a smaller scale map compared to the Johannesburg map. Okay, so this slide is really important. If you want to maybe screenshot it or keep a record of it somewhere, it will really help you. So in smaller scale maps, the area has been reduced many times. So it's a big area that's had to be shrunk a lot to fit onto the piece of paper. Everything on the map looks smaller and there's gonna be less detail. And when we write the scale of the map, the numbers are going to be bigger. So for example, a larger scale map could be one to 250,000, one to 50,000. But like I said, that just depends on what you're comparing it to. Okay, then a larger scale map, everything on the map looks bigger and there'll be more detail and the area has been reduced fewer times and that means that there's going to be smaller numbers so for example 1 to 500 or 1 to 250 um, so if we looked at for example a small scale map and we had 1 to 50,000 that would be a smaller scale map than a 1 to 500 or 1 to 250 scale Okay, then we have three types of scale. We have a statement or word scale, a ratio scale, or a linear scale. The first one that we're going to look at is a statement or word scale. The scale is written out in words, and it's very important that you always put units in your scale. Or, sorry, not always, but in the statement or word scale, that's important. And the units of measurement need to be the same for both the numbers. So an example would be one centimeter on the map represents 50,000 centimeters in reality or in real life. And 
they have put a little question for you. Why do we use the word represent instead of equals? This is very important. We use the word represents because one centimeter is not the same as 50,000 centimeters. We're saying that one centimeter that we measure on the map represents 50,000 centimeters in real life. I do go into a lot more detail in this in the distance and direction video, so you can go and have a look at that. But it's important that you have both numbers with a unit and the units need to be the same and that you use the word represents. Okay, the second type is a linear scale or line scale. This is a physical line that you'll see on the bottom of your map and it's used to represent the scale. The thing with a linear scale is that it's not very accurate. I'm going to show you what I mean by that in another video now. This is a map of South Africa and we can see that it has a linear scale at the bottom here. Remember, this would be a very small scale map compared to, for example, a map of just Johannesburg or Gauteng. With this linear scale, I can put my ruler next to it and we can see that for every 8 millimeters that we measure on the map, that would be the same as 100 kilometers in real life. Okay, so the reason why we don't necessarily use a linear scale when we're working out distance and that type of thing is because if, for example, I wanted to measure the distance between Port Elizabeth and East London, I can see that that's about 20 millimeters or 2 centimeters. When you're doing map work, it's always better to use the millimeters part of your ruler, but then you must just remember... Um, with the formula that we use for calculating distance, we have to put centimeters times 0, 0,5. If you want to go back to that video, you can go and look at it. But millimeters is much better because it gives us more accurate answers. Okay, so we can see here that it's about 2 centimeters or 20 millimeters. So if I put that on the linear scale here, I can see that the distance between Port Elizabeth and East London would be about 250 kilometers because it's in the middle between there. But can you see how it's not very accurate? It's only giving us an estimate. You could take that little line and split it up into <laughs> a million little pieces to get an accurate answer, but that would take forever and this is a very small portion to be working with. So that's why a linear scale is nice to get an average or an estimate for a distance but it's not very accurate so that's why we rather use a ratio scale um, and use our formula especially when we're working with a topographic map we say something centimeters times 0 0,5 gives us something kilometers but that only works with a 1 to 50,000 map okay and then the last one a ratio scale this is the scale that we use most to work out distance and that type of thing and it's written in a ratio form. With a ratio scale, we don't need to put the units of measurement in. I've just shown you that this ratio scale is saying that one unit represents 50,000 of the same unit. That's what's important with a ratio scale. So, for example, this ratio scale could mean one centimeter on the map represents 50,000 centimeters or in reality, or it could also be one meter on the map represents 50,000 meters in reality. As long as the units are the same, that's what a ratio scale means. I hope this video has been really helpful for you. As I said earlier, please let me know in the comments if you do have any specific topics that you'd like me to cover in the future. But I'll see you next time.